You're watching Higher Things Video Shorts with me, Pastor Chris Hall. If you're looking for an easy way to support Higher Things, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any Higher Things content. You can follow Higher Things on social media and our website over at www.higherthings.org. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, we ask that you remember us in your donations and prayers. Weeding through history today, we kind of keep walking through the life of Luther. Last time we talked about him coming back from the Wartburg, right? In the movies, it has Frederick the Wise sending for Luther, but that's not what happened. Luther came back all sneaky-like. He dressed up like a knight. Even Lucas Cronach didn't recognize him. He gets back to Wittenberg, starts preaching. He preaches these sermons to say, y'all got to slow down. Don't follow Karlstadt. Don't follow Munster. Don't follow these radical reformers. Instead, let us get into the Word of God. So he, he's translated the Bible, right? That's what he did at the Warburg, translated the New Testament. Then he starts working on translating the Old Testament, has a, other guys helping him out, like Melanchthon helped out with that as well. So he's translated the Old Testament, the New Testament from the Greek and the Hebrew, and he's teaching, he's catechizing. And it's interesting here what Luther did. When Luther was at the Wartburg, Karlstadt actually started communing in both kinds. Up till that time, the host or the body of Christ was the only thing given to the laity. The blood of Christ was not. Karl Stott said, no, both kinds for everybody. Didn't teach about it, just did it. Luther comes back, and he doesn't keep the practice going. He actually takes the chalice away again. Not like he goes, man, mine. He's not that. He just says, we have to know why we're doing it first. So the next few years with Luther, and you'll see this over almost the next decade, is emphasizing catechesis, teaching the faith. So as he's doing this, he's teaching the faith. He's still getting attacks from the, the sacramental people. He's getting attacks from Rome. He's getting accused. And all the way up until 1524, that's when the big guns come in. And Rome gets this guy named Desiderius Erasmus to write a document on the freedom of the will, that man naturally has free will. So he writes this against Luther in 1524. Big things happen right after that. You have the peasants' revolts. Luther writes a bunch of answers to that. One supporting the peasants, one supporting the nobility, and then finally a third document in which he says they need to compromise. So the death stops. But then another awesome thing happens during this time. June 13th, 1525, Luther gets married. He marries a runaway nun named Katharina von Bora. And this is probably the best thing to ever happen to Luther. Because now he has this helpmeet. He has this supporter. He has this companion through life. And it's amazing the works that Luther produces after he gets married. Because up until that time, Luther's not really answering Erasmus. Erasmus is written on free will. He's not answering. He's saying it's no good. Erasmus is this well-respected theologian throughout all of Europe. I'm just this backwoods theologian in Wittenberg. No one's going to listen to me. You know, he's kind of like a false humility. But at the same time, when Luther translated the Bible, the New Testament, he used Erasmus's Greek New Testament. So Erasmus is a big name. So he's not responding. Finally, Katarina says, you've got to respond. You have to respond because the salvation of many depends on this. So Luther pens, in my humble opinion, his best work ever outside of the catechisms, which are basically his best, is The Bondage of the Will. Phenomenal work in which Luther responds to Erasmus on the freedom of the will. And he says, no, man outside of Christ has a bound will or bound desire, like we talked about earlier, that concupiscence. We have this. And it's phenomenal. He talks about long gospel distinction, the hidden and revealed will of God, election, mercy, forgiveness. He goes through multiple Bible passages, the hardening of Pharaoh's heart, the reality that Christ is our second Adam, John 3, 16, all these great things. 
And he also wrote in that year his Deuteronomy commentary, in which you get a lot of this theology. So really, 1525 is like the year of Luther. We always do 1517 or 1520, but 1525 is a phenomenal year in which you get some of Luther's best theology. His Peasants' Revolt, Treatises, the Deuteronomy Commentary, Bondage of the Will, and then, of course, getting married, and from that day on, just having phenomenal stuff to say about the estate of marriage. So God bless y'all. We'll see you next time as we weed through history, seeing what Luther's up to. Bye-bye.